Um, Melissa? Yes, what is it, Cindy? To be honest, it's actually really difficult for me to say this to you, but... You know, um, I don't even have enough money to support myself. Okay. So, um, I'm really, really sorry, but can I stop with giving you the financial support? Huh? Financial support? I live on the pension, and I can't really afford to give you any financial support. Uh, um, what do you mean by giving me the financial support? Huh? My name is Melissa, and I am 30 years old, working in a company. I met my husband Caleb through a singles party, and we just got married a year ago. My husband is a kind and funny man, although he can get a little carried away sometimes. And the reason I decided to marry my husband is that because he is very family-oriented. I want to make sure to look after and reassure my mom. She's getting old, and I'm worried about her, you know. I want to take care of her as much as I can. When we were dating, I heard my husband talking like that about his mother, and I thought he was a wonderful person. Later, I met my mother-in-law, Cindy, for the first time to inform her about our marriage and she was a very nice person. Oh, Melissa, thank you so much for accepting Caleb as your husband and being a wife to him. You're such a lovely and nice girl, and you're too good to be with Caleb. Even after Caleb and I got married, Cindy never changed her attitude and treated me kindly. I know it must be hard to do all the house chores while working. Melissa, you can always count on me, you know. Thank you very much, Cindy. You often hear a lot of talks on TVs and radios about issues between the wife and her mother-in-law, but there is no such problem with Cindy and I, and I have never once been mistreated by Cindy. Rather. She takes care of me like her own real daughter. But a little while after we got married, there was something that bothered me a little. It was not about Cindy, but it was about my husband. I'm exhausted today, so let's go to my mom's and have dinner. What? Today is your turn to cook dinner, right? So, I'm saying that I'm exhausted from work and don't want to do anything, so let's go to my mom's. But won't that be a hassle for Cindy if we go so suddenly without any prior notice? Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about that. Mom must be lonely too, so it'll be nice for her too to have us over and have a lively dinner all together. Cindy had lost her husband three years ago, and now she lives alone in their house. Her house is a bit large for one person to live alone, and she could certainly get lonely. But isn't it too rude to just visit Cindy out of the blue without saying anything? If it were just my husband, it would be enough. But even I would be intruding Cindy. And if we were going to have dinner with Cindy, she would need to make some preparations. How can my husband even think that it's normal to think that we can go over to Cindy's without any prior notice? Even if we go, we should at least call Cindy to let her know. What? Well, you don't really have to do that, you know. We're just going back to my parents' house. To you, it may be that. But to me, I feel like I'm intruding. We have to at least be mindful to Cindy and have manners. When I persisted, my husband said, Okay. And while looking really lazy, he picked up the phone and began to call Cindy. Mom said we could go. Are you really sure? I really hope she's not just saying that. Come on, Mom says it's okay, so why not? 
I think you're worrying too much, honey. There was no point in wasting any more time arguing with Caleb. So we headed to Cindy's house anyway. Oh, welcome you two. Thank you for coming all the way down here. My mother-in-law greeted us with a huge gentle smile despite our sudden visit. Well then, hurry up and do come in. I just got it ready now, so please do enjoy it before the meal gets cold. Huh? You cooked that much? Cindy had made several dishes for us and served them to us. When I heard that you two were both coming, I got really enthusiastic, you know. See, I told you. Mom is really happy that we both came here today. Even if that is true, it is too inconsiderate of Caleb to even say that in front of her. My husband opened a beer without any hesitation, drank it down, and ate what Cindy had cooked. Well, I'll have some of the dishes you cooked, Cindy. Thank you. No, no, please do eat a lot. How do you like it? Oh, it's very delicious. How did you make it? Oh, I'm so happy then. Next time, I'll teach you how to cook this. Yay, thank you so much. Because Cindy was always kind, both Caleb and I were able to have dinner that day in a peaceful way. But a few days later, my husband suggested once again that we should go back to Cindy's house for dinner. We went there just the other day. So that's just too much. It'll be a huge hassle. No, it's fine. I've already called her about it in advance this time. Oh, really? Yeah, I called mom yesterday. Oh, so you were already planning to skip cooking today too? Oh, don't say it like that, honey. I did do my part in preparing the meal, haven't I? No, Cindy is the one who is preparing the meal. So practically, you didn't do anything. So, I'm the one who asked my mom to cook for us today, right? So that means that even though I'm in charge of cooking, making sure that the meal for us is ready is part of my responsibility too, right? I don't know what the hell Caleb was talking about. Even though Caleb was saying something nonsense, since Cindy had already prepared the meal, I had no choice but to go along with him. Cindy, I'm sorry for disturbing you again when we just came the other day. Oh, what are you talking about? I told you that you can count on me any time, didn't I? If you're in trouble, don't hesitate to ask me anything, okay? Well, it's not like we're really in any trouble. It's just that my husband is slacking off in cooking and doing house chores and that's why he's only relying on Cindy for her meals. Thinking like that, I felt very sorry for Cindy. Since then, upon my husband's suggestion, we always went to Cindy's place to ask her to feed us on the days when he was in charge of cooking. Despite that, Cindy always greeted us with a smile and cooked us delicious home-cooked meals. But I felt really bad to ask Cindy to help us out without us doing anything so many times, and that's pretty questionable being adults and all. So I made a suggestion to my husband. Hey, I'm not going to tell you to stop going to Cindy's, but... I think we should at least thank her for cooking meals for us. Huh? Like what? I think we should give Cindy some financial support for food since she's taking care of us so much. I don't think mom really cares much about that though. No, but I still feel bad. I'll give you some money every month from my salary, so will you give it to Cindy for me? If I give the money directly to Cindy, I am sure that she would be too careful and would not accept it because she's a very kind person like that. So I thought it would be better to give it to her from my husband, who is her son. 
My husband's eyes widened in surprise, but he said, Well, if you insist that much, then I understand. I'll take responsibility and give it to mom. I was relieved that I could now repay Cindy a little in this way. After that, we continued to eat dinner at Cindy's house, and my husband would say this, We're eating at mom's place, as if it was a normal thing now. We had dinner at Cindy's house about twice a week, and before I knew it, three months had passed. Of course, I felt a little bad, but since I know that I also gave Cindy some financial support, maybe I was thinking in a spoiled way. Then, I learned about a shocking fact. It was after dinner one day at Cindy's house. Whew, I ate very well. Saying that, my husband had finished eating and was relaxing on the sofa watching TV. I was washing dishes and cleaning up with Cindy. Then, Cindy started talking to me with an awkward look on her face. Um, Melissa? Yes, what is it, Cindy? To be honest, it's actually really difficult for me to say this to you, but... You know, um, I don't even have enough money to support myself. Okay. So, um, I'm really, really sorry, but can I stop with giving you the financial support? Huh? Financial support? I live on pension and I can't really afford to give you any financial support. Uh, um... What do you mean by giving me the financial support? Huh? Uh, uh, well, you know, like I cook you both meals regularly and how I'm giving you financial support regularly. What? I understand that you and Caleb are in trouble, but as you can imagine, I'm starting to feel a little desperate too. H hey, wait a minute. I don't know anything about you giving us financial support. What? Besides, I am giving you financial support every month, aren't I? Huh? I felt bad about you having to take care of us so many times, cooking us amazing meals, so I gave Caleb some money to give to you, Cindy. I haven't received anything from Caleb. What? Then both Cindy and I had realized something. There is only one person we could think of. I had never been pissed off like this ever before. Then I immediately went over to Caleb, who was lying on the sofa. Hey, Caleb! What is the meaning of this? What? What is it? My husband seemed to be drunk and he was giggling around. What do you mean, what is it? What's wrong with you, shouting at me like that? Did you have an argument with mom? I grabbed my husband, who was lying down by his chest, and woke him up. Wh what is it with you all of a sudden? We've been getting financial support from Cindy? What? And where did you put the money I asked you to give to Cindy? Uh, well, that's... My husband is just clamming up, upset, as if he has something to be guilty of. J just let go of me for now. I feel like I'm going to throw up if you shake me too much. So I let go of his chest. <coughs> <coughs> Will you please explain what exactly is going on? Uh, about what? Are you trying to act dumb at this point? Cindy seemed to have lost her patience, and she also began questioning Caleb. You told me that you were both in trouble, so I gave you money and even fed you dinner multiple times. Hey, what the hell? What's wrong with you? Even you're mad at me, Mom. We have every right to be mad at you. You have been deceiving Cindy and I, you know. That's a terrible way to say that. Then, where did our money go to? Hey, let's just stop talking about this. 
we just had mom's delicious food and now you're spoiling the good mood. And whose fault is it? The that's my husband couldn't say anything back anymore and went silent. You're not going to tell me how you spent the money, are you? All right, fine. Then I have an idea too. Caleb looked at me as if he was asking me what my idea was. I called my sister-in-law, Lila. Lila is very protective of me and takes care of me really well, and my husband is very weak towards Lila. Lila is a strong-willed, independent woman, and when my husband, who has always been a good guy, would get carried away, she makes sure to set things straight for Caleb. When I called Lila and explained the situation quickly, she said she would be here soon. When my husband found out that Lila was coming over, his face turned really pale. Lila lives about a 10-minute drive from Cindy's house, so she came right over. Caleb, what the hell did you do? What did you do with Mom and Melissa's money? Th that's. My husband stubbornly refused to talk even after Lila arrived. This is going to be a long battle. Melissa, you can go home for today. I'll interrogate him all night and make him talk. <clears throat> Th thank you very much. I'll be waiting for your update. So, I took Lila's word for it and decided to go home first. The next day, when I went to work as usual, I received a message from Lila. Caleb finally came clean. He's a terrible bastard. Can you come over to Mom's house again after work today? I wondered what it was. I wondered what Caleb did which made Lila describe him like that. So, I went to Cindy's house after work. My husband and Lila was already there. Oh, Melissa, I'm sorry to make you come over again. It's okay. My husband was made to sit on the floor, and his face was turning pale by the minute. Well then, Caleb, why don't you talk to Melissa properly about the truth? I stood right in front of my husband to listen. He was looking down at himself really awkwardly. I can't really understand you if you keep looking down. Please explain to me what's going on. I'm so, so sorry. It was just a spur of the moment kind of thing. What was? Well, um, I, um, I had an affair with another woman. Huh? I'm really sorry. So you were cheating on me behind my back? I guess so. You're such a bastard. I'm really sorry. And? What did you use the money on which Cindy and I gave you? Uh, um... Answer me properly. For the trip and the date and the hotels for the affair. And the travel fees. What? A trip? How did you even have the time? Oh. Don't tell me that you're talking about these business trips that you've been having frequently. My husband then nods awkwardly. Wow, I can't believe this. I can't believe that you lied about your job and went on a trip with a woman to have fun. I'm really, really sorry. It won't happen again, so please forgive me. Oh, there is no way that I will forgive you. We're getting a divorce. A divorce! N no way. You can't just divorce me. It was a one-time mistake. Then, before I could get mad at Caleb for what he said, Lila and Cindy snapped. That's enough, Caleb. What you did is absolutely unforgivable. Yeah, that's right. And what do you mean it was just a one-time mistake? When you've been on numerous trips and you've been seeing her secretly many times. Divorce is a must. A wonderful person like Melissa shouldn't be pushed around by such a lousy brother like you, Caleb. You will definitely pay alimony for your affair and the money you stole from Mom and Melissa. Oh no. 
Then, Lila took out the official documents for divorce and handed them to me. She thought that I would need it, so she got it for me at the city hall, as well as a number for a lawyer. I checked the documents and signed the parts I needed to sign and gave it to Caleb. My husband was reluctant, but Lila and Cindy got angry with him again, so he signed it right away. Thus, like this, my divorce from my husband was finalized. Then, through my lawyer, I demanded alimony from Caleb and his mistress. Of course, I also claimed the money I had given to Caleb. I also heard that his mistress was also married. And since her husband is also demanding alimony from Caleb, he is now in huge debt. Currently, Caleb is living at Cindy's house, and both Lila and Cindy manages Caleb's wallet, making sure that he does not waste his money and that it is always used to pay off his debts. Because of this, Caleb only gets $10 every day to go to work, and once he uses the money for his lunch and so on, he won't have any money left. So, he can't even go to bars and afford any luxury, and he has no choice but to go home. Caleb deserves what he got, and it's not at all surprising that he now has to pay back the money he had used, when it wasn't even his money. Caleb is just a low-life scumbag, having an affair based off on other people's money. On the other hand, I live in an apartment now and I am living comfortably on my own. By the way, I still keep in touch with Cindy and Lila, and the three of us sometimes go out to dinner together. My ex-husband is a low-life scumbag, but the only thing I'm grateful to him is for giving me the opportunity to meet Cindy and Lila. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.